Thank you. We got one minute more. Now it's already 5 a.m. Let's all rise. Let's begin our pledge by offering one standing vow to our beloved true parents, Hanim Guang, Champung Wen Mei, Sorgede Pei, Kimbe, Baro, Family Pledge, one. Our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to seek our original homeland and build the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven, the original ideal of creation by centering on true love. Number two, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to represent and become central to heaven and earth by tending the heavenly parent and true parents. We pledge to perfect the beautiful family way of pure sons and daughters in our family, patriots in our nations, saints in the world, and divine sons and daughters in heaven and on earth by centering on true love. Number three, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to perfect the four great realms of heart, the three great kingships, and the realm of the royal family by centering on true love. Number four, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to build the universal family encompassing heaven and earth which is the heavenly parent's ideal of creation and perfect the world of freedom, peace, unity and happiness by centering on true love. Five, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to strive every day to advance the unification of the spirit world and the physical world as subject and object partners by centering on True love. Six, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges to become a family that moves heavenly fortune by embodying the heavenly parents and true parents and to perfect a family that conveys heaven's blessing to our community by centering on true love. Seven, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges through living for the sake of others to perfect the world based on the culture of heart, which is rooted in the original lineage by centering on true love. Eight, our family, the owner of Chung Il Duk, pledges, having entered the era of Chung Il Duk, to achieve the ideal of God and human beings, 
united in love through absolute faith, absolute love, and absolute obedience, and perfect the realm of liberation and complete freedom in the kingdom of God on earth and in heaven by centering on true love. Yes, let, let us pray. Our most beloved Heavenly Parents, today, Saturday, here at Washington Family Church, May 17, we pray that today, I'm Sheil, we are celebrating the eighth day of the victory always of our two parents over many obstacles and many stages. We pray that today we can always connect with our true mother who is here on earth and unite with all her desires and commands to rise up and really declare and really guide people to know about true parents. We pray that today our true parents can always use us as the instruments, the voice box to propagate your will and also to really talk to people about the many good things, the three great blessings that our true parents has already given to many of the people gradually from the East and now all over the world. We pray that we'll be also guided by our good ancestors, all the good absolute spirits. We pray that we can always be encouraged by those who are always near us, who are always making us having good spirits and uplift us always, even in difficult times and we pray that they can always be with us when we talk to other people as we talk to their ancestors too and we pray that we can open up to them about our true parents. We pray that as we go to our place of work and even here in this church, in every place that we meet some people, we can always give them a smile and give them and it should love them and we pray that they can remember us and always we can always discuss in a few sentences if they have learned about or know about two parents and even in during meals we can always discuss as father has guided us to really discuss about the two parents when we pray that we there is a new amen or a jew and we pray that also that we can share it during meals to anybody that we uh, sit with or have meals with. We pray also our heavenly parents that we can learn your language also, the Korean language, as if we, you know, the time that we eat is the, the same time that we also learn about your heavenly tongue so that we can always really converse or even know your will and know how to read all your 
words in your own language and heart. We pray that today we can always be guided by not only other religions but your own teachings and apply it as we go through this great book, the World Scriptures, Roman numeral 2, and the teachings of San Yang We pray for each other's success, for healing, for protection, and we pray for all the second generation who are showing up all their achievements right now and we pray for them that they can always be healthy and strong to really also do natural witnesses by bringing more of their friends to this church and really make them also good members in the future. And we pray all of this in all our names, and in my name, Athanasius Francis Piccadillon, bless him with our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. Our Jew. Good morning. So, we we just go now to page 85 where we left off cause and effect mm -hmm. the maxim that a person reaps what he has sown belief in divine retribution and the doctrine of karma are diverse expressions of a common idea that the world is governed by justice. Religions give various teachings regarding the specific manner in which justice is meted out, example, through one's faith in his in this life by reincarnation or in the afterlife yet all agree that one way or another justice will be served yes. it is inherent in the nature of the universe as designed by a benevolent creator that good deeds be rewarded and evil deeds punish. This is the principle of cause and effect. The principle of cause and effect bears the same ambiguous relationship to ultimate reality as divine law generally in the Eastern religions the principle of justice is inherent in the fabric of the cosmos and is therefore subordinate to the ultimate goal of liberation. Karma and the will of samsara display the operation of cause and effect. Yet, these are part of the hellishness of human existence and have nothing to do with the ultimate goal of nirvana and enlightenment where the cycle of rebirth is broken. On the other hand, the monotheistic religions portray God as the divine judge who visits punishments upon the guilty to maintain justice. Nevertheless, it is not the Heavenly Father's purpose to act as a judge against his children. Rather, with love and truth, he guides them on the path to salvation. Therefore, as Father Moon does, 
we can ascribe God's judgments to the operation of His creation. A cosmos that is designed to administer justice through the operation of cosmic law. The passages in this chapter describe two aspects of cause and effect. First is the aspect of justice. People reap what they sow. Father Moon draws instances of this principle not only in the lives of individuals but also from the history of nations and races who collectively have committed sins that must bear requital. Even though this world seems to tolerate injustice and permit wrongs to go unpunished, scriptures assert that the ultimate individual recompense is in the afterlife where he or she is destined either for heaven or hell. Here, Father Moon's teachings give a deeper explanation for why sinners are destined for hell, not by the decree of any angelic judge, but by the conditions they made for themselves during earthly life. Second, there are passages on cause and effect as a universal principle that operates in the growth and completion of all beings. We learn that the effect is not separate from the cause, rather they are closely tied together. The core Buddhist doctrine of dependent origination expresses the negative of this idea as ignorance develops through a causal chain to the whole human condition of suffering, dukkha. A Taoist text puts it positively, the cause and effect form a circuit, the movement of heaven. Father Moon teaches that God is immanent in the, the world, working everywhere as the cause and revealing himself in human beings as the effect. Ultimately, God and humans, cause and effect, are to be united as the Alpha and the Omega through love. Number one, we're now on page 86, we reap the consequences of our actions. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked, for whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. Galatians 6 verse 7 Whatever affliction may visit you is for what your own hands have earned. From the Quran, Surah 42, 30 All who take the sword will perish by the sword. This is from Matthew 26 verse 52. Suffering is the offspring of violence. Realize this and be ever vigilant. Akaranga Sutra 3.11 or 13 Jainism. Ashes fly in the face of him who throws them. Yoruba proverb African traditional religions. They saw the wind and they will reap the whirlwind from Hosea chapter 8 verse 7. An ignorant man committing evil deeds does not realize the consequences. 
the imprudent man is consumed by his own deeds like one burnt by fire. This is from Dhammapada 136 Buddhism. Mm -hmm. Unto God belongs the sequel of all things from the Quran 31.22. God is not hornless. He is horned. He acts he exacts punishment for every deed. This is from Obambo proverb African traditional religions. Unrighteousness practice in this world does not at once produce its fruit, but like a cow advancing slowly, it cuts off the roots of him who committed it. Loss of Manu, 4.172 Hinduism. There are no special doors for calamity and happiness. In men's lot, they come as men themselves call them. Their recompenses follow good and evil as the shadow follows the substance. Treatise on Response and Retribution 1, Taoism. Not in the sky, nor in mid-ocean, nor in a mountain cave is found that place on earth where abiding one may escape from the consequences of one's evil deed. This is from Dhammapada 1 to 7 Buddhism. The net of heaven is cast wide. Though the mesh is not fine, yet nothing ever slips through. This is from Tao Te Ching 73 Taoism. Before, never avenge, or, I'm sorry, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Let not their con conduct grieve you, who run easily to disbelief. For law, they endure God not at all. It is God's will to assign them no portion in the hereafter, and theirs will be an awful doom. And let not those who disbelieve imagine that the rain we give them bodies good for their souls, we only give them rain that they may grow in sinfulness and theirs will be a shameful doom. This is from the Quran, Surah 3, 176 and 178. Islam. Everything is given on pledge and a net is spread for all the living. The shop is open and the dealer gives credit and the ledger lies open and the hand writes and whosoever wishes to borrow may come and borrow but the collectors regularly make their daily round and exact payment from man whether he be content or not, and they have that whereon they can rely in their demand, and the judgment is a judgment of truth, and everything is prepa prepared for the feast. This is from Mishnah Avor 3.20 Judaism. From <coughs> Taoism, further as heaven and earth are the greatest of things, it is natural from the point of view of universal principles 
that they have spiritual power. Having spiritual power, it is proper that they reward good and punish evil. Nevertheless, their expanse is great and their net is wide meshed. There is not necessarily an immediate response as soon as this net is set in operation. Pao Pu Chu from Taoism. Holy then did I recognize thee, O wise Lord, I perceive three foremost at the birth of life. When thou didst in thou acts and words with retribution, bad unto bad, good blessing unto holy, through thy wisdom at the final goal of life. This is from Avesta Yasna 43.5 Zoroastrianism. According as one acts, according as one conducts himself, so does he become. The doer of good becomes good. The doer of evil becomes evil. One becomes virtuous by virtuous action bad by bad action. But people say a person is made not of acts but of desires only. I say as his desire such is his resolve. As is his resolve such the action he performs. What action he performs that he procures for himself. On this point, there is this verse, where one's, one's mind is attached, the inner self, goes thereto with action, being attached to it alone, obtaining the end of his action, whatever he does in this world, he comes again from that world to this world of action. So the mind that desires Brihadaryan Yaka Upanishad four that four from five to six Hinduism. Now I think Ravanessa can read the teachings of Sun Myung Moon. It's on page eighty seven. We continue to read on the subtopic cause and effect teachings of Sang Myang Moon. In order for life to be sustained, centering on this body, all the different parts must engage in give and take action as subject and object partners. In everything engaged in this action, does what is what it is supposed to do, then the physical body will function smoothly and existence will continue. But what happens when this is blocked somewhere? The universe protects anything that engages in give and take in accord with God's ideal. If an opposing element appears, something becomes lacking, or there is a blockage, there, there will be a failure with that realm of interaction. Hence, in order to protect the universe, there will be a reaction to expel it. The, this reaction is not a bad thing. It may, be, it may be seen as something bad, but it truly functions to protect the larger realm. For example, 
if your stomach hurts, it means there is a blockage in a circuit of give and take between uh, give and take action between some subject and object partners. The blockage, <coughs> the blockage causes it to be the blockage causes it to be pushed away to the same extent as it is blocked. A cosmic force to push it out acts on the stomach and it hurts. All you need to do is open the place that is blocked and you will feel fine. Likewise, the world of our conscience and the entire human world are in pain. Why? There are elements that do not meet the standards of the cosmic force and the universe is trying to push them out. Hence, we feel pain in our conscience. While the conscience was going in the proper direction, something stood opposing it and blocked the conscience function. We experience a reaction resulting in pain. If the problem is not solved, that reaction will send the person into hell. This was a speech May 20th, 1987. And we read, Now the law of cause and effect cannot be avoided in history. America is an extension of Great Britain. Thus, America is in a position to indemnify what Britain did wrong in history. What did Britain do when she colonized Asia, especially China? She, co she killed countless Asians push, uh, through pushing the opium trade. Britain adopted the policy to dominate the Chinese and profit of them, while totally unconcerned what whole population became helpless addicts. Some, someone today has to indemnify that, that scene. America's Americans, especially American youth, should indemnify that history, historical debt. Otherwise, young people will be pl uh, plagued by drugs as a result. October 4th, 1979. Wow! Father is amazing. Uh, we read, God abhors sin and misuse of love is the sin God abhors the most. God regards sinners who, come, uh, who commit such transgressions and do not repent as his enemies and he visits them with destruction. It is the principle that Whoever indulges in illicit love will perish. In Italy, the lustful and the immoral city of Pompeii is, was destroyed by instant calamity. Sodom and Gomorrah perished under the, law, the same law. The Roman Empire once prevailed in the world with unparalleled power, but it collapsed uh, for the same reason. From the, from the vantage point of history, America today is on the same path unless it repents for 
is violation of the law of God's love, it will, it, it too will perish. April 29, 1979. And we read, I was involved in the under, underground resistance movement against Japanese imperial rule. And from that perspective, the Japanese were my enemies. They were the enemies of the Korean people in general, and my enemies in particular. Yet, after Japanese were defeated in the end of World War II, I loved the Japanese. Sometime earlier, certain Japanese policemen had arrested me for my activities in the, re in the resistance and tortured me severely. When the war ended, I could have reported them, and they, they all would have been executed. Yet, when I came across those same policemen running for their lives, I helped them escape to safety. Do you know why so many young people in Japan place their eternal lives in my hands and pledge their royalty to me, it is because there is a principle of cause and effect which dedicates that they must return what was given. True Family and World Peace, February 10, 2000. Uh, it is 5.35, and we've come to the end of that reading uh, on page 88. Uh, we can continue tomorrow the chain of uh, consultation. Right. Is there anyone who would like to share from what we read today? from Cause and Effect, page 85, through to page 88, Teachings of Sang Myang Moon. I think what has uh, touched me and very inspiring is uh, uh, True Father's very broad mind of uh, highlighting this cause and effect in terms of history of British or England with America. And uh, we who are doing Hundoke here, this is a great revelation that as the Elder Sun Nation, we are reading this uh, story, what British or England did in its own history. It colonized uh, many parts of the world. Of course, Father here is talking about China, but in Kenya and uh, many parts of Africa, uh, England or Britain colonized those parts of the world. They colonized even America itself was a colony of the British and uh, many other places in the world were colonized by the British and we know providentially in the inter from the God's viewpoint England was supposed to be the Eve nation. God had prepared it internally through the religious movements that came from Protestantism um, and it moved to England and England being an island nation uh, we read in the principle uh, pre uh, parallels of history that Britain being the nation picked this spirit 
of um, evangelizing the world and uh, that was the mission of uh, to give birth to the world uh, from as a result of uh, Christianity breaking away from uh, the oppression of Catholic uh, powers that existed that time uh, they became another powerful nation they were given a lot of blessings by God they developed the maritime ability and navy and they were able to travel the whole world and they mapped actually Britain or England did a lot of things to what is uh, today's education they mapped the whole world and then after that they made all these uh, discussions and made the divisions of uh, different nations and boundaries uh, so in all this we see there is uh, they were doing the right thing and but they also did many wrong things and these wrong things is what true father is saying America should indemnify and now I think in this vision 2020 the elder son nation is called by true mother to um, America is matched with different parts of the world and uh, should take responsibility to love those nations, support those nations and, theref and that way uh, from what we've read today we can uh, make conditions of indemnity uh, to indemnify uh, that history as America is the product of England or Britain so and again there is a warning here to America that God's God abhors sin and the worst sin God abhors the most is the misuse of love and God uh, the true father is giving examples of uh, Pompeii somewhere in Italy which was uh, crushed due to lustful and immoral city of uh, Pompeii was destroyed by instant calamity Sodom and Gomorrah perished in the same way and the Roman Empire which had prevailed in the world and parallel, uh, had, was unparalleled by power also collapsed by the same reason and now America today is in the same path unless it repents for the violation of the law of God's love it will perish so we Americans true father is revealing to us what is our responsibility at this time and thanks to we have this chance in reading Hundoke so that we can know uh, what kind of attitude we should have at this time uh, of history thank you thank you Reverend Asra. so is there anybody who wants to share also about the reading today and effect yeah in page 86 uh, it says here that uh, Father Moon's teachings give a deeper explanation for why sinners are destined for hell not by the decree of any angelic judge but by the conditions they made for themselves during earthly life as I mentioned to you before uh, when we read another book the Chong Chong Gyong 
in the Old Testament, Father was, you know, declaring that Jehovah, you know, the God in the Old Testament was an angel. So I, I think this one refers to that. And he was a like a judge, you know, he disciplines uh, the Israelites. And now we have true parents. Uh, it's not only like, you know, like a... Uh, portraying God as a divine judge who visits punishments upon the guilty to maintain justice. But, you know, uh, a heavenly father who not only judges, you know, his children, but rather with love and truth, he guides them on the path to salvation. So that's what true parents is doing for all humankind and in all other religions they speak of the same thing that uh, in the African proverbs it says uh, God is not hornless he is horned, he exacts punishment for every deed and in the Quran also, unto God belongs the sequel of all things. And in the Christian belief too that uh, those, uh, you know, who have committed injustice and wrongs uh, to go unpunished, scriptures asserts that the ultimate individual recompense this in the afterlife whether he or she destined either for heaven or hell. So, uh, that's all I can share today. Is there anybody who wants to share about the reading today? Okay, if there is none, let's all rise and have unison prayer. Our most beloved heavenly parents, we're so thankful for this reading today, for the same things are being taught and being placed in their sacred texts in other religions about the past and the past. We pray and we're so thankful to our true parents for giving us a path way to even not only cleansing ourselves but also our ancestors. That we can even liberate them and even bless them. And we pray that you give us more opportunities our heavenly parents as you are giving us today, that we can always work many things that we do, and even bad habits, and even the whims and surprises that we think of, we pray that we can always control these things and correct many things that we have in our lives and cleanse it and really as you have guided us in also by offering many things and also offering for our ancestors. We pray that here in America many people will realize the issues of love and issues of people and we pray also that there will be healing. <coughs> and we pray that all over the world can always be guided by your loving principle of watching as True Mother has guided us. They need to know about two parents. And right now, the most influential country in the world, and even the city in this world, is in 
here in Washington, D.C. Right. Many laws are yeah. being made, of many decisions yeah. are being made. Yeah. And we pray that many good spirits who are here are, who are listening, that they will also encourage others. Likewise, conscientious spirits, you really guide all the senators and congressmen and even the president of the United States. You really find ways to alleviate many things and even also help, like the people in Nigeria who have their girls being abducted, 220 of them or more, from their schools, from their houses, and are being announced to be sold as slaves. We pray, our Heavenly Parents, that these things would not continue, but there'll be justice too, and these people would realize also that the things that they're doing will be placed in their conscience, that they can really repent also, and really feel the law, because the law is love and truth. And we pray for the safety of these girls, and we pray that they can be recovered by the help of America and even England, who is sending unmanned aerial vehicles so that, so that they can monitor the movements of these people. We pray for its success, we pray for each other's success, we pray that all over the world they will respond to the love of our true parents and we pray that we can always propagate the love and the blessings of our true parents, especially the second blessing, that it will be all centered on God, our true parents. We pray for its success always, and we pray that we can gradually build a community here in Washington, D.C., with 4,000 churches, with many embassies of the world. We pray that they can connect here with us and learn a lot about the good ways from the divine person. And we pray that before they die, all these spirits will know about true parents. And we pray all this in all our names, and in my name, Athanasius Francis Sikatalan, blessed good friend, our Jew, our Jew, our Jew. Uri Yeso Onun Tom Rumero So Onun Tom Imo Son Bacho So
Good morning, Reverend Oliver. Have a nice and wonderful Saturday. Um, yes? Yes. Okay. What did you say? Yeah, about upstairs. Uh, the Japanese people uh, uh, told what's that? Like? Our bishop came, did not visit our room before. Now we need to clean up when he comes and gets seen. These are the Japanese uh, with the uh, Fumi san. Mm. So I, I know he, they discuss it with Wasana. Mm. Maybe it might be unstable, the, mm. the internet. 